So far, you have learned how to categorize each of those accounts into the respective account types or elements. Um, you have also learned how to analyze business transactions and how to show their effects on the basic accounting equation. Now, the next thing you are going to want to really master would be T accounts. However, before we get into T accounts, we need to talk about debits and credits. Now, debits and credits have some very basic meanings. Debits, those are on the left, and credits, those are on the right. And it may seem very basic, but it is just a very important little definition to keep in mind. And you'll see more about what this means when we get into our T account. So keep in mind, debits on the left, credits on the right. Now, debits and credits, the way that we analyze these depends on what type of account that account is. Now for right now, this might be a lot of just simple memorization, but in the long run, this will make a lot more sense. So for now, let's take a look at how we can really analyze this. Now, you should remember from our prior lesson when we were analyzing business transactions and recording those on the basic accounting equation that sometimes the asset would be going up. For example, we're receiving cash and sometimes the asset would be going down, for example, when we're paying cash. And we saw the same thing with liabilities. Sometimes the liability went up when we owed more money and sometimes the liability went down when we actually paid off what we owed. So all of these accounts, they can go up or down and whether that increase or decrease is a debit or a credit depends on what type of account. Now. Since we're really into in the introductory phase, I just want to kind of go over a quick little cheat to keep in mind as you go through the T account lesson and then through the respective journal entry lesson. Um, there is a fun little system that we use and let's actually start with the mnemonic. There is a reason why we put these in that order. Assets, liabilities, capital, income, and expenses. And as I said earlier, it spells out ELSI. So it's a acronym that we can use. So ELSI, let's go ahead and type that over here. We have ELSI and we need to know whether or not each piece is an increase or a decrease according to the debit or credit. So the best way of remembering this I have found, there's several different little ways of doing it, but my favorite way has been pregnant Elsie. Now this is Elsie and Elsie is pregnant, so I will type on her protruding belly using plus signs. There we go, there's her protruding pregnant belly. And I'm just gonna fill in those empty spaces with minus signs. There, so as you can see, this kind of lets us know if the asset is increasing, we have to debit it. If it's decreasing, we have to credit it. For example, if an income account or a revenue account is increasing, then that would be a credit. If it's decreasing, then that would be a debit. So let's just practice one real quick. Um, let's say that I have an expense account and it is increasing. What would that be? So we have an expense account. It is going up, it is increasing. So I would have to debit the expense account. Um, another one that we can practice is what if I have, um, let's use an actual account rather than an account type. Let's say that my accounts payable is going up. Well, remember accounts payable are things that we owe. What we owe is a liability, those future economic sacrifices. So if accounts payable is going up, we would have to credit accounts payable. Now, once we get into those T accounts, it's going to make a lot more sense. But until then, remember this handy dandy little chart and it should help you really master those T accounts and journal entries a lot faster. So let's move on to T accounts and happy studying.